Hurricane Floyd races toward the U.S. mainland. People make sure they won't be around to see him. And the agonizing struggle of the Honduran people as they recover from Hurricane Mitch. Fox 8 News starts right now. WBUE TV, New Orleans. This is Fox 8 News. Nearly 2 million East Coast residents are being told to board up their homes and head out before Hurricane Floyd gets any closer. Good evening. Floyd's lost some of its strength, but no one is letting their guard down. With winds of 140 miles an hour, this storm is still a, a major threat. Meteorologist Bob Bragg is here with the latest. Well, John, satellite pictures tonight show that this center is not nearly as well-defined as it was earlier. In fact, when it was down south, it had a much more classic look to it, and you can see it there. Moved right across Grand Abaco Island and kind of not fell apart, but weakened a little bit. Now, it seems to me that it's still moving parallel to the Florida coast, and that's going to keep the brunt of the storm east of Florida, and it means probably headed towards the Carolinas. I'll have more on Floyd when I return. Well, Floyd is still hundreds of miles away, but people in South Carolina are already getting out of the way. The governor has ordered a mandatory evacuation of some 800,000 coastal residents. The Red Cross is ready to open nearly 100 shelters at inland sites. And it was bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic in Savannah, Georgia. Traffic filled the roads leading away from the Georgia coast. 90 miles of the eastbound lanes of Interstate 16 are closed to let evacuees use them as a quicker way out. The first signs of Hurricane Floyd are starting to reach Florida's coastline. The waves are crashing on Daytona Beach, uh, said to be just a glimpse of Floyd's fury. Daytona, Cocoa Beach, and Palm Beach are practically ghost towns. And for the first time ever, Disney World decided to close because of the storm. Earlier, we talked with Sarah Graham, a 19-year-old Ponchatoula native who works at the amusement park. It's the first time she's been through a hurricane without her family. This is way different, because at home, everybody seems more calm. And here, everybody's, like, very scared. But then some things are the same, like Walmart was crazy. There was no water left. Some stuff like that. But it was it's different. I think mostly because mom and dad aren't here. Coming up at 9.20, we'll go live to West Palm Beach, Florida to see what the weather's like there now. An 18-wheeler hit a school bus this morning and forced it to roll over. The crash happened on Louisiana Highway 10, just five miles north of Amite. All 42 kids on board were taken to the hospital, but their injuries were minor. The truck driver, 26-year-old Gary Brooks, was ticketed for careless operation and negligent injury. Incumbent Senator Lambert Boisier basically won re-election today. Wassier's only opponent, Democrat Herbert Cade, withdrew from the race. Cade told Fox 8 that he dropped out after talking with Boissier about the concerns of his supporters. Those included gay rights, civil rights, and labor issues. He says that Boissier promised to be more responsive to their needs. The gloves are off in another race for the state legislature. Longtime state representative Sherman Copeland may be in for the fight of his life to keep his seat. A political unknown is getting noticed with his Bible and some broad-based support, and a candidate who has faced Copeland before says she's back, and this time stronger than ever. You're going to find the reason yeah. why God has selected yeah. you. He's preached the gospel for more than 20 years at Light City Church in the Ninth Ward. I want to know how are your people doing in District 99? But lately, Reverend Leonard Lucas's sermons have taken on a political flair. He's spreading his message of hope for his battle against political powerhouse Sherman Copeland. We knock on 10 doors, they'll all say the same thing. He's got to go. He's made enough money, he's misrepresented us, he's got to go. And we know he's got to go. People are tired. Lucas is a good rhetorician, but unfortunately when it comes time to deliver, you have to have more skills than that. For more than a decade, Copeland has represented District 99 in the state legislature with a power-wielding reputation, once garnering 80% of the vote in the ninth board. But four years ago, a little-known teacher from the district took 40% of the vote. The first break in Copeland's long-standing support. This year, Isabel Moore is trying again. We need better schools. We need better streets. We need something to come here. We need some variety stores. We need something. Copeland admits he does not live in the district, but he uses his mother's address as his official home. Both Moore and Lucas are making that a focus of their campaign. I was born and read in District.
District 99 to the lower 94. It's a fake issue. Every Tuesday from now until the October 23rd primary, we'll take a look at the candidates and issues in several state and local races. Well, just ahead, the survivors of Hurricane Mitch and how they didn't let the monster storm break them. And we'll go live to Florida's east coast as people there get ready for Floyd. Last October, New Orleans filmmaker Stephen Scafidi documented the destruction left behind when Hurricane Mitch devastated Central America. Now, one year later, Fox 8 brings you a special behind-the-scenes look at the making of the people story. A gripping portrayal of people overcoming adversity and unbelievable odds. Don't miss this one-time special, tonight at 9.30. Sponsored in part by Pan American Life. For the first time in memory, Jefferson Parish is facing a deficit. That's just not acceptable. We need and deserve better fiscal management from our parish council and more accountability for public funds. I'm Pat Sharp. I'm a CPA and a strong fiscal conservative. I'm also a taxpayer who expects public officials to handle our money responsibly. It's a new century, and it really is time for new leadership on our parish council. The wit and wisdom of Judge Judy. You know when a loan becomes a gift? When the relationship is over. You ever hear that? I've never heard that one. <laughs> Nor have I. Goodness, I just made it up. Judge Judy. I gotta get ready for this. Justice with an attitude. Tomorrow at 4, only on Fox 8. The 2000s are on their way, and your Mercury dealers are scrambling. It's the Mercury Clearance Countdown. Time to take advantage of amazing model year-end specials, like a fantastic lease offer on the hot-looking, fun-to-drive 99 Mercury Cougar. Right now, you can lease a stylish Cougar for only $238 a month. Only $238 a month for Cougar's awesome handling and heart-pounding performance. With deals like these, selection won't last, so hurry. It's the Mercury Clearance Countdown. See your local Mercury dealer today. Please come through. I mean, this hurricane hit us, and it left us for dead. It's been almost a year since Mitch hit Honduras, and the amazing spirit of the Honduran people is still strong. You've seen the destruction of, in Honduras from Hurricane Mitch last October. Now, a film you don't want to miss. The People's Story premieres at the Palace Theater Friday. Fox 8's Kim Holden recently went back to Honduras with the film's director and joins us live from the Palace with a preview. Kim? Nancy, it was an emotional trip back. You know, you want to go back and see that everything's back to normal, but in reality, it's not. They're struggling. They have a long way to go. The People's Story is a film about determination and how the spirit is still very much alive. When the world finally got to Honduras, this is what was left. Devastation. Only pictures could describe. An entire country in physical ruins. The human toll even more staggering. 6,000 dead, thousands more missing. The media told the facts, and they were heart-wrenching. But New Orleans filmmaker Steve Scafidi told the people's story. When the house fell down in the river, over there they are dying. To tell it through their eyes, to through their words, that's as true as you can get it. This month, Scafidi revisited Honduras and the people who touched his heart with their amazing courage. Hola. Good to see you. He meets 17-year-old Maria Rodriguez at the same site where he filmed her last year, a park near the river in Tegucigalpa. It was under 15 feet of mud days after Mitch. Remember the first day I saw you guys, you were, you had a whole bunch of uh, students digging right up in here. Today, the area is for the most part cleaned up, but it may never be the way it was. People died here. The world, as Hondurans knew it, changed forever. And uh, over there, they, uh, they found a couple of more people the day we were here. I mean, it, it looked like a, a bomb went off here. That's what it looked like. It was just unbelievable. I tell you what, being standing here right now is uh, sending chills through my body. It's uh, really strange. 
Scafidi and his crew spent 10 days filming. Images like this changed him forever, too. I've never seen anything like this. And uh, I wonder if, if something like that would happen to me if I would have been standing there with the shovel saying, you know, this ain't so bad. We, we can do it again. Dignitaries from around the world came to New Orleans in July for a private screening of the people's story. It was the first time many had seen the devastation in Honduras. Now it was time for the people in the film to see themselves. Their eyes never left the screen. It brought a lot of bad memories. It brought memories about people suffering, but it also brought memories about people working, because it was pretty bad. But I could say now that we've, we've come through. They've come through because of faith and courage. More than all the money in the world, Hondurans say that is what matters. It doesn't matter how much in terms of material things you can give, that's not what's going to reconstruct the country. What's going to reconstruct the country is what comes with, in, uh, within the people, what we have inside. Scafidi met with Honduran President Carlos Flores about bringing the film home. One thing is what you say when you're just saying things like that, and the other thing is when you get to see things in terms of what uh, a camera can do in the way that people say their own stories. So it is difficult, I know, but still we have to, to go on, to go forward. The people's story moved its own stars. And many people, because of you, really know what happened in this country. So I think we really must thank you a lot. You did more than what many other foreign institutes did. It was very well done and very good job. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Scafidi found out words can't do justice to moments like that. The moment I'll never forget was when Maria Rodriguez stood up at the end of the film. And I can't remember exactly what she said, but basically, thanks for coming down and telling our story. I couldn't speak, and uh, to see those people there just took my breath away. And as the film opens in New Orleans, the message today is the same as it was a year ago when the crew filmed. Where there is hope and courage, the power of the human spirit can't possibly fail. Now, there are some private showings this week at the Palace Theater, but on Friday it opens to the public, and Scafidi has been asked to submit the film for a possible Oscar nomination. President Carlos Flores says if that happens, if it's nominated, he will be there for the ceremony. Nancy, back to you. All right, Tim Holden, thank you. We hope you'll join us for the making of the people's story a half-hour special on Fox 8 tonight at 9.30, right after the news. Well, coming up, a live report from uh, the current threat, the Florida coast as Floyd creeps closer. And the bullseye appears to have shifted to the Carolinas, as I'll show you just ahead on Fox 8. I love my truck. Mostly in the world. What I like to do when the game is through, hit the open road. See your Southern Quality Ford dealer for low 4.9 APR on new F-150s, even with a Triton V8. A little bit of style and a whole lot of soul. Buy a Ford truck, such a good time for all. <laughs> day after day, we ask our children to learn in sweltering classrooms. But instead of learning, too often our kids are just trying to stay awake. Our kids deserve a better chance than that. It's time we put air conditioning in every school. It's time we fix the crumbling walls and ceilings that are literally falling down around our children. Our classroom shouldn't be an obstacle course for our kids to overcome. There should be a safe place to learn. And when I'm governor, the only thing our kids will have to sweat is the next exam. Jefferson for governor. From the day Ernie was hired, he knew he was working for a tough boss. First time I met the guy, I knew he was all business. Punch in by 7, 40 minutes for lunch, no exceptions. I figured the guy for some nickel and dime benefits package, but no, 
Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana. I remember when my son needed a specialist. Blue Cross was with us all the way. And uh, so is Mr. Tough Guy. Be true blue to your people, and they'll be true blue to you. So, uh, does your kid like comic books? We got them for you. If debt problems have you worried or overwhelmed and you're not sure which way to turn, Consumer Credit Counseling Service can help you choose the right direction. A local nonprofit community service since 1965, Consumer Credit Counseling Service doesn't lend money or provide a quick fix. We help you get back on the road to a healthy financial future. Debt problems disrupting your life? We have real solutions. Call Consumer Credit Counseling Service today or stop by an office near you. Fox 8 Weather is brought to you by Walmart. I've always had a thing for the outdoors. So I jumped at the chance to help Walmart's environmental program adopt a section of the San Marcos River. Our job is to keep it clean and make sure it stays a safe place for our kids. And even their kids. But it's even more important than that. Because it's not only our playground, it's also home to several endangered animals and plants. That's why Walmart's been involved with the environment for years because we live here too. And we believe good works. Hurricane Floyd's about 28 hours from hitting U.S. land. Yeah, the storm, a category four, is just skirting the lower Florida coast. That's where Fox's Orlando Salinas is standing by live. And Orlando, what's the weather like now? Hi, John. We are, as you said, here in Lantana, Florida. And as you can see, the, the rain is starting to come down just a little bit. Really, it's just a small squall. We've been seeing these all day as we've been out here doing live reports with people all around the country. And that is what you're seeing right now, a very light mist, very light rain. Here in Lantana, most of the people that usually are in this area are gone. This place went through a mandatory evacuation. We are standing to the right of, on the left of your screen, uh, behind a four-story condominium. So we're safe. But you know, John, as everybody's been following this story, it appears right now that Floyd is moving northwest at about 12 miles per hour. So these people here, in the Lantana, Florida area certainly are breathing a huge sigh of relief. No way that they are, they are not out of the woods completely yet. But forecasters are saying it appears that Floyd is moving away from this area for now. Uh, Orlando, what exactly have they done at NASA? Obviously, everybody didn't just leave the right. shuttles behind. Right. No, they didn't leave. What they've got there right now, actually, from what we understand, is a small skeleton crew. I was reading lately just up on some of the AP wire, and that is what we understand. Certainly, the buildings there at Cape Canaveral are built to withstand, I think, winds of up to about 120, 125 miles per hour, not the 140-mile-per-hour winds that are coming off Floyd right now. They have a skeleton crew that are taking care of. They haven't left that place completely empty at all. All right. Uh, Fox's Orlando Salinas live tonight in West Palm. They dodged a bullet, for sure. Mm -hmm. And now the Carolinas are getting ready for... Well, you know, the nervousness shifts. It was yeah. all over South Florida mm -hmm. last night, then it went up over Central, now North Florida, and I think it's going to be really Georgia and the Carolinas. Yeah. Let me tell you, this is quite a picture I'm going to show you. We're going to take you underneath and show you how the bands are now just off the coast. Oh, my goodness, isn't this a picture? There's Florida, and there's the bands. Now, West Palm is right down in through here, maybe right up in there. They're getting some of the outer feeder bands rotating around this uh, picture but there's the eye of the system right there. See, getting some of the squalls on land, but the eye now clearly visible on radar. And if you follow it, it went right over. This is Grand Abaco right there. It went right across that island, and they're now getting hit by the backside of the eye wall. So they really have had a day, and I'm sure a lot of damage down there. Watch it pass right over that island. Oh, my goodness. And now it's reemerged out over the warm waters again. It's likely to get stronger, a little bit stronger, as it interacted with the island here, the center is not nearly as, as concentric as it was earlier. It's a little more ragged, but certainly there's this well-defined structure to this system. And if you follow it, though, it is certainly going parallel to the coast. No signs of it going that way. So I think what you're going to see is tonight it'll go parallel to the coast, and somewhere up here it's going to make a right. It's going to head up maybe up towards Myrtle, uh, Myrtle Beach, uh, north of, uh, say, Charleston. At any rate, it's not going to uh, affect Florida with a, uh, the brunt of the storm. They're just going to get swiped. Winds of 140, that's still a Category 4. Pressure has continued to rise slowly tonight at 27.1, 77.6. New coordinates will be out shortly, as will a new track. But again, the track is one that is keeping it off the coast of Florida and headed towards the Carolina coast. This is the Hurricane Center's track, putting it right over Charleston sometime around midnight tomorrow night. So I think it's going to be a little bit east of that now, the way I'm looking at satellite pictures at any rate. 
the Carolinas are going to be in for a very nasty uh, late Wednesday on into Thursday. Here's the upper trough coming down, waiting to pick this thing up, and it's going to race it and accelerate it right up the East Coast and probably headed towards New York City and the major metropolitan areas as a big rainstorm. Uh, what it's doing for us, it's bringing down, you see, there's the system there. The circulation is uh, counterclockwise, bringing down the drier air. We have high pressure up here, and uh, these clouds, they just uh, fall apart as they get into that high pressure. Not going to be a factor in our weather. We're going to see a lot of sunshine. Here are the wind flow uh, arrows tonight, all pointing from the north to the south, has, uh, meaning the gulf is cut off. Now, this front will just kind of wash out, and uh, we won't have any fronts and any rain the next couple of days. All we're going to notice is it's going to be rather breezy, not only tomorrow, but the next day, until Floyd gets farther away, and then things will start to settle down. 89 was the high, 75 the low, and if you've been out tonight, especially north of the lake, it's already down into the 70s at Slidell. It is 84 at Audubon, 83 in Canada. There's going to be a big difference either side of the lake. The north winds at 13, they're going to stay up all night. So North Shore in the 60s, South Shore the way it looks now might even stay above 70. That lake water is still around 82, 83, 84. Sunny, breezy, warm and dry. What a day tomorrow, 85 to 88. And that uh, should last not only tomorrow but the rest of this week. Nights in the 60s for the most part away from the lake. Daytime highs in the 80s. I don't think we'll see 90s for a while. Hopefully, maybe not till next summer. Marine forecast is not a good one. The small craft advisory is up. And you're going to have to use some caution. Uh, it's probably stay in protected waters for the next couple of days. And again, Floyd, Floyd's not done yet. It's going to it's going to land somewhere, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, up next, uh, Larry Foster was supposed to star at LSU this year. Tonight, he's in trouble with the law. We'll tell you why in sports. Ideas of power, the power to change, the power to make things better. Shane Guidry is CEO of one of Louisiana's fastest-growing companies with more than 300 employees. His ideas have built a strong company and can build a better Jefferson. Ideas to fund drainage, fight crime, bring better-paying jobs to the West Bank make Shane Guidry a welcome challenger for change. Shane Guidry, Councilman. Ideas have power. Everybody loves Popeye's, and now you can get two pieces of delicious Popeye's chicken spicy or mild in a biscuit for just $1.99, or get 15 pieces of crispy, juicy Popeye's chicken for just $10.99. I love that chicken from Popeye's. Time is running out. That's right, folks. Don't miss another minute of Winn-Dixie's early wheat sale. There hasn't been this much excitement since the gold rush. Right now, a WD brand U.S. Choice whole boneless beef brisket is only 98 cents a pound. Harvest Fresh White Seedless Grapes are also 98 cents a pound. Through Wednesday, pick up Pepsi Favorites, 98 cents a six-pack. And stock up on these Jack and the Beanstalk vegetables, four cans for a dollar. Head them up and move them out to the early wheat sale now at Winn-Dixie. Fox 8 Sports is brought to you by Chevy Trucks. They haven't seen it yet. They're bound to say something. You know them. Never had a loss for words. Chevy Silverado. More headroom, legroom, and more maximum towing capacity than Ford F-150 or Dodge Ram 1500. So where do you want this stuff? The new Chevy Silverado. It's the truck. The Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Act like they've never seen a truck before. Plus, Silverado comes with this attractive smart buy. All right, a uh, bizarre story to start sports and certainly alarming for LSU fans, Yeah, too. And, and this is, I mean, for all indications, I've been a good kid. Every time I've talked to him, I've had a real good feeling, you know, from his All-State days at West Jeff to his All-SEC days at LSU. Larry Foster has always done the right thing. Today's news that he was arrested was really shocking to the LSU community. Foster arrested for allegedly stealing a purse from a student on campus. According to police, Foster was identified by witnesses. Later, he was picked out of a photo lineup. Foster was taken to the Baton Rouge jail. Bond was set at $10,000. He posted the bond and was released this evening. Foster has been bounded by a bad hamstring, though he's expected to start Saturday against Auburn. Now, coming up at 10 o'clock, head coach Jared Gennardo and some LSU players will talk about Larry Foster's arrest. After a pair of scrimmages, the LSU Tigers will get down to the real deal this weekend. It's the SEC. They'll host the Auburn Tigers Saturday afternoon. It's a nationally televised game. For Rohan Davey, it's his second start in a row. 
after watching Auburn bring the pain last weekend. Davey knows the pressure will be coming. The defense looks pretty good. And as far as our game plan, I think our game plan is suited for what they're going to do because I know me being, you know, my first time starting in the SEC game, and they know it's my first time starting. Our coaching staff, as well as myself, expect them, you know, to blitz me a lot and try to get me routed and, you know, make bad decisions. Here's the question for Saints fans. Are the 49ers that bad or are the Jaguars that good? Last Sunday, the Jags beat the Niners by 38 points. Steve Young, embarrassing. 9 of 26. Sunday, the Saints will travel to Three Town Park. And guard Wally Williams says that well, the Niners are so good, they're not a dominant team anymore. They have a lot of good players over there, but, uh, you know, at one point it was a lot of killers over there. I don't think there's too many killers over there anymore. You know, they have, uh, you know, good guys in certain positions, and, you know, we got to do our things to contain those guys. But, uh, you know, we just have to stay focused on our job, what we have to do, and, uh, you know, everything will work out for us. So. Want to see the Saints and the Niners? Only one place right here on Fox 8. Kickoff set for 3 o'clock. Once the game's over, come back here at 9.30 for Fox 8 Sports Sunday. I'll be in San Francisco with the latest and five-time Pro Bowler Pat Swilling and the rest of the Fox 8 Sports fans will be here for the hardest talk allowed by law. His teammates Jose Lima and Mike Hampton both have 20 wins. Shane Reynolds, a little slacker, going after number 16, helped his cause with a home run tonight. Houston beats Philly 10-2 the final. Reynolds is going to get win number 16. So when your two teammates get 20, 16, it's not that good compared yeah. to... No, it would be a pretty good year, though. That's for well, that's our news for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you stay tuned for uh, Fox 8 special, The Making of the People story, coming up next.